Hello, logic people. Let's do some proofs in predicate logic. Let's begin with this short inference here. Nothing is perfect, therefore, it's not the case that something is perfect. Let's symbolize this, first of all. Premise one, there's only one premise here. For all x, it's not p, okay? The conclusion is, it's not the case that something, it's false that for some x, x is p. Okay? Now, we have no direct way of doing this, of doing this proof. Um, and we have no rule to allow us to derive the negation of a, um, an existential quantification. Okay? So, we know what to do. If you don't know what to do, you do reductio. So we're going to suppose, line two here, the negation of what we want to prove. Okay? So let's suppose something is perfect. Sup, RA, and our target is to derive a contradiction. Okay. What rules do we need to use to do this proof? Remember I said you should always, what are the new rules so we, so we know um, what arbitrary individual to use, if any? Okay? Well, we're going to need to use UI. Why? Because we're going to have to take off a universal quantifier. Um, looks like we're going to have to also um, use EI. Because we have to take off this. Um, existential quantifier. And really those are the only two rules we need. No, there are no restrictions with UI, so we don't have to worry about that. There are some restrictions with EI. Remember whatever individuals introduced by EI um, cannot occur in the conclusion. Well it won't, so that's not a worry. Um, also it has to be new to the proof. So since we have to use both of these rules, let's do EI first here. Okay. So, if something is perfect, then some arbitrary individual is perfect. Let's call that lowercase i, pi. Okay? It's right here, 2ei. Um, premise one, every, nothing, right, nothing is perfect. Okay? So we can say, well, then i is not perfect. 1ui. Okay, we look at lines three and four and we see we have a contradiction. Three, four, conj. Since our supposition on line two led to a contradiction, therefore, we can conclude that our supposition is false. Two through five, RA. Okay, um, nothing is perfect. Therefore, it's not the case that something is perfect. And you probably can see right here that it's also um, goes the other direction. These, these two statements are actually logically, equi logically equivalent. And you can, for practice, prove it in the other direction. Okay? So I'll ask you to do that on your own. Prove it, or prove, you could say, the con in the, the, prove the converse. Prove it in the other direction. And by doing so, you will prove that these two statements are logically equivalent. Okay. Let's look at a second argument. If someone was a great guitar player, then Hendrix was. Therefore, if everyone was a great guitar player, then Hendrix was. This is an interesting example that's talked about in the book at some depth. Um, I think it's good to go through it here. Remember the book? This one right here. Yes. Okay. All right. Let's translate, symbolize the first statement here, the premise, so to speak. Okay. If someone was a great um, guitar player, at least one thing is G, you could say here, then Hendrix was. 
See that? Therefore, the conclusion is, if everyone was a great guitar player, then Hendrix was. Okay? Now you might be a little iffy with the translation, the symbolization. Um, I'm just going to take it this way for now. Let the, the, I'm just following the way the book translates it. Translate it a little differently if you want to, if you want to put a parenthesis here or take away the parentheses right there and see if you could prove it equally. But let's prove it this way first. All right. Um, first of all, you can't use EI on this whole statement right here. Why? Because as stated right here, as symbolized, this is not an existential quantification. Now, if there were parentheses right here, then it would be an existential quantification. But actually right here, we have a conditional statement whose antecedent is an existential quantification. But you can't just use EI on just a piece of this. It has to apply to the whole line. So we can't use EI on this directly. All right. Um, now we're going to have to use UG um, at some point in this proof in order to get our conclusion, in order to put back or put on a universal quantifier. So we need to use UG. Um, do we need to use another rule? Well, probably, probably so. Um, or maybe not. You just, we don't know quite yet. But right now, it looks like all, all we really know for sure is that we need to use UG. Now, if that's the case, we're going to need to use little u. Remember that? That's our arbitrary individual that we use, or the name we use, um, when we use UG. Okay. Another thing to keep in mind here, you know, what is our strategy here? If we use reductio, that doesn't make things easier. We have to negate this whole thing. That doesn't make things easier. Um, doesn't seem to be a direct way right here. So I want you to think backwards here. What is the second to last step? The second to last step will be this. GU arrow um, GH. Because once you have that, you have an arbitrary individual there, then you can universalize over it, quantify over it, um, and get this final line. So this should be our target now. But if that's our target, notice that this is a conditional statement. So you should be able to use CP. Line two, you suppose the antecedent is true. The antecedent is GU. Okay? So CP, and our target is GH. Given that we have GU, we can actually derive this antecedent right here. So looks like we do need to use another rule, EG. Line three, you're going to get for some x, it's g. If u is g, then something is g. Look, we get this antecedent right here. Um, and we're trying to get gh, so it looks like we're in good shape here. Okay, 2eg. No restrictions on eg, so we can use that easily. Line 4, now we can use modus ponens to get gh. 1 and 3, mp. All right, line 5. Let's break out of this subproof here, this indented proof. We get GU arrow GH. Sorry, GH. Okay. Um, if U is G, then H is G. Okay. Two through four CP. Now with line five, right, we can now use UG. And add universal quantifier to the front here. Okay, so if everyone is a great guitar player, then Hendrix is. Okay, good with that. Now, what we're gonna do is actually show that these two statements are logically equivalent, so we're gonna work backwards.
That is, if everyone was a great guitar player than Hendrix was, that is equivalent to, or it also follows that if someone was a great guitar player than Hendrix was. You see this? So this is just the converse or reverse of that argument right there, and that will be sufficient to show that these two statements are logically equivalent. Now, we're going to have to use, look on this one, we're going to take off the universal quantifier, so probably have to use, right, um, UI. Let's see, um, what else will we need to use? Um, we could kind of figure out as we go, but probably, probably EI, as you'll see quite, quite shortly right here. Okay, so looking at what we have, what strategy can we use? Um, reductio doesn't seem to make much sense, right? Suppose the negation of this whole thing, that doesn't seem too easy. So I think probably you should use CP here. This is a conditional statement. Remember we have, you know, if, if you have, if your target's a conditional statement, you can always use CP. So line two, just like on this other one, let's assume the antecedent, or suppose the antecedent of our targeted conclusion. Sup, CP, and our, now our new target is the consequent here, GH. All right, so now we have these two lines here. We have the original premise here, and we have this added supposition right here. Okay, there are no restrictions on UI, but there are restrictions on taking off this existential quantifier with EI. There are restrictions here, um, but it shouldn't be a problem. We're not going to refer to any arbitrary individual in the conclusion, and we can just use EI right now. So let's see, if we're going to use EI, we need to use the name small i. Okay? Something is G, and we'll say, well, for some arbitrary individual I, it's G. Okay? So 2EI. 4. Okay, given this premise right here, let's instantiate over this universal quantification, and we're going to get if I is G, then H is G. Okay? If it's true that for all things, um, that are great guitar players, Hendrix's, or H's. So we're gonna write one UI. Now look at lines three and four. Using modus ponens, we get GH. Three and four, MP. Okay, look, from this supposition, something is G, we get Hendrix's G. Line six. two through five, CP. So these two statements are actually logically equivalent because we can prove it in both directions. All right, hopefully this is helpful. Give some more examples of proofs in predicate logic. And notice also we're getting into uh, chapter 19. That was the final reading um, for the semester. And so this is where we're at right now. Hopefully you're feeling pretty good about proofs and predicate logic, try to do all the exercises you can in the book, look at the answers online. Okay, I'll see you.